Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the Palm Harvest broadcast. I'm Pastor Mike Decker. Merry Christmas to all of you tuning in today. We are filming, Beto and I are filming from Canyon Park, which is here in Costa Mesa, California. We're about one mile as the eagle flies uh, to the Pacific Ocean. And here on Christmas Day, the forecast high today is going to be like 75 degrees, which is a little bit unusual, but certainly welcome. And so for those of you tuning in from the Midwest and the East Coast and maybe even from Canada and you find that when you look out your window, it's lots of white snow, uh, our hope is maybe to bring a little sunshine your way even through this today's Christmas conversation. So let's get after it. If you have a Bible uh, with you close by, whether it be in paper or digital form, I invite you to turn in it to the Gospel of Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Today we are going to sort of unpack various elements of the Christmas story. And in it, specifically, we are going to look at the birth of Jesus. And as we unpack the birth of Jesus, there are three things that I specifically want to invite you to join me in, in sort of celebrating on this, this Christmas day. You know, it's interesting to me when I think about the Christmas story, how God, our Heavenly Creator, decided to introduce His Son Jesus into the world through the form of a baby, a newborn baby. You know, one of the things that you have likely experienced in your life, I know I have, is how newborn babies, they're so innocent. And if you've ever been a parent or a grandparent or maybe, you know, a loved one and you've had the privilege of being around the birth of a, a baby, you know how they're, they're just so welcoming and, and the birth of a child in, in many ways just kind of brings people together. You know, if you're a parent, if you're a grandparent and you have the privilege of holding, you know, that newborn in your hand, something transactional takes place, right? Emotionally, you know what I'm talking about? Where this child, without even doing anything, just by their very presence of this new birth, it, it creates this bond. And so I find it so interesting, again, that God, our Heavenly Creator, would seek to introduce His Son, Jesus, to the world in the form of a baby. Do you suppose that God knew that a baby would bring people together? I think that's a good chance. In fact, today in our Christmas story, I want you to look at specifically who God used and brought together as a result of the birth of His Son. And as we start by reading here in Luke chapter 1, the first idea that I invite you to think about as we dive into this Christmas story is this truth. And that is, encountering Jesus is an open invitation. Encountering Jesus is an open invitation. Friend, today in our conversation, my hope is that you will encounter Jesus. So let's dive in. Let's look at Luke chapter one. If you have it in, in front of you, whether again, it be in paper or digital form, I'm gonna start reading at verse 26. And if you wanna just sit and listen or follow along on the prompts on the screen, please do so. But as always, try to picture the scene in your mind as the story unfolds. Luke chapter one, I'm gonna begin reading at verse 26. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I'm a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. 
So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. You know, in the Gospel of Matthew, which is another book in the Bible, we can read another kind of perspective of the Christmas story. And in the Gospel of Matthew, we can read about Joseph, who was Mary's fiance. And the Bible writer tells us that after Joseph got the news that his fiance was pregnant, Joseph decided to break off their engagement. You know, he did what I suspect many of you men watching today or listening to this podcast today would have done. He just said, you know what, Mary, if you're going to cheat on me, uh, I'm out. And the Bible tells us that while Joseph was considering this decision and kind of how to break off this relationship quietly, that God approached Joseph and, and spoke to Joseph in a dream. And in this dream, Basically, the message was this, Joseph, this baby that Mary is carrying is my son. This baby in her womb is is the son of God. And I'm inviting you to marry her. And if you choose to marry her, if you choose to be this baby, surrogate, earthly father, I want you to name him Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God is, is with us. Well, if you know the story, Joseph wakes up. The Bible tells us that he brings Mary kind of into his home. He he obeys God's dream instruction and he invites Mary to be his wife. And in the the Gospel of Luke chapter 2, which is the next next passage of scripture that I want you to look at, verse 1, this is how the story unfolds. Again, picture the scene in your mind. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. don't miss this. Pay close attention to this. To whom did the angel first announce the birth of Jesus? To what audience did God the Father seek out to deliver the news about his son's birth? Well, it was to a group of shepherds, wasn't it? The Bible tells us that God sent an angel to to gather together sort of this group of outdoor herdsmen, if you will, as they're watching over their flock at night to to deliver the news of the birth of his son. You know, for those of you who have ever been around the birth of a child, maybe you've had the privilege of being a parent yourself. Dads, let me specifically talk to you. Who do you generally tell first when your son or daughter is born? Don't we generally call those people who are closest to us? Don't we generally give the news to those loved ones in our life who mean the most? Like our mom, our dad, you know, a brother, a sister, maybe 
a best friend. And so it's not surprising really to me that, that God would make you know, known the announcement of the birth of Jesus. But what is interesting and what I think the Bible writer is sort of inviting us to consider is the audience to whom God the Father gave the first news. Friends, if you know anything about shepherds in biblical times, they were considered kind of the riffraff of society. They were the discarded ones. And so when God sent his angel to deliver the news of Jesus' birth, the son of God's birth, to this group of shepherds, kind of the low lowlifes in societal norms, God in that moment was shattering the religious boundaries that existed in that day. You know, most of you know that shepherds in biblical times were looked down upon by the religious elite in the Jewish kind of system of faith. You know, shepherds worked a uh, hard occupation. They, they, they worked, you know, with animals. And if you've ever spent any time with animals, you know that it's a 24-7 endeavor. You know, you can't just go on vacation for two weeks and leave your animals alone. They need to be fed. Some cases, they need to be exercised. And so consequently, a shepherd's life and a shepherd's occupation kept him from, and her, from sort of observing the strict religious rules of the Jewish faith. In many cases, their, their, their work occupation made them unclean. And in most cases, it kept them from observing the Sabbath, which meant not working on, on a day of rest. And so consequently, when God announced the birth of his son Jesus first to a group of, of non-churchgoers, God our Savior, God our Creator, was saying to the world, he was saying to you and me, that access to his son is for everyone. Encountering Jesus is an open invitation. It's an open invitation to the white collar worker and the blue to the person who is rich and to the person who is poor. It's to the person who has clean skin and the invitation goes to the one who has tattoos. It's to the churchgoer and to the non. In fact, God's invitation to meet his son goes to those who have an empty closet and those who have skeletons in their closet. Encountering Jesus, friend, is an open invitation. Have you encountered our Savior? Have you encountered the Messiah, the Lord? If not, are you interested in meeting him? It's interesting, the angel told the shepherds, you will recognize him by this sign. You will find the baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, now catch this, lying in a manger lying in a manger. You know, if there's one thing that these shepherds would have been very familiar with in that area, it's the location of, of the mangers. Because the manger was this, this piece of farm equipment, if you will, from which the animals would drink water or maybe they would eat grain if a shepherd chose to give to them. And mangers would often be found in, in barns or, or these kind of these rock enclosures where a shepherd might take his sheep at night and to, to protect them from wolves and, and, you know, various animals. And so when the angel told these shepherds that Jesus could be found in a manger, instantly, I propose, they knew, they probably just started cycling through their mind all the various places, mangers and or barns were found in that local arena. They knew where to start looking. You know, friend, had Jesus been born at a temple? Or had he been born in a nice hotel? These shepherds wouldn't have had access. But the fact that they, Jesus was to be found in a manger reinforced God's message that everyone has access to the Son, both the sinner and the saint. Encountering Jesus is an open invitation. Listen, I don't know what your story is, 
whether you consider yourself to be religious or not, whether your life is stained by sin or not, I don't know. But this is what I do know. The Bible is very clear in this Christmas story that a relationship with Jesus is open to all. It's open to you and it's open to me. And that's what we call good news. Amen? Amen. You know, years later, if you fast forward in Jesus' life story after he grew up, the Bible tells this about this encounter that Jesus had one night in, in Jerusalem. This, he was an adult at this time, and, and the Bible tells us this, that this man, this, this rabbi, this Jewish religious teacher, approached Jesus late at night to ask him some questions. By this time in Jesus' life, he had kind of gone public with the fact that he was the Son of God, that he was the Savior of the world. And this religious rabbi, this Jewish man, thought there was something to, to what Jesus had to teach. And so in the Gospel of John chapter 3, we can read this conversation that Jesus has with Nicodemus as Nicodemus is kind of peppering him with these questions. And in response to one of Jesus' questions, or Nicodemus' questions, Jesus gives Nick this answer. His answer, by the way, is probably one of the most famous Bible verses ever. I'm sure you've heard it. Jesus said this. He said, Nick, God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him, whoever believes in him, did you get that word? Whoever believes in him will not die, but will receive the gift of eternal life. And then Jesus continued, which is even better. He says, God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Listen, if you're watching this conversation right now and you're sitting on the couch next to somebody or there's somebody in the room or maybe you're listening to this on your podcast, if there's someone next to you, would you just turn to them and say the word whoever? Whoever? Whoever believes, Jesus told us, will not die but will receive the gift of eternal life. Friends, the Bible says whoever, that means you, that means me. That, does, that means not just the Jews. That means not only the church goers or the podcast listeners or all the perfect people in this world. No, that means sinners, that it means saints, that means you, that means me, whoever. Reinforcing this truth that encountering Jesus is an open invitation. And so one of the truths that I invite you to ponder today on this Christmas day is the truth that Jesus came for you and that Jesus came for me. And neither your sin nor my sin can prevent Jesus from wanting to have a relationship with us. You know, early in my life, I know that Jesus was pursuing me. And I ran and I, tr I fought off kind of God's call on my life. And maybe you can identify with that struggle. But no matter what I tried, no matter how hard I tried to get away from God, I just continued to feel him pursuing me. Reinforcing this very truth that access to the Son of God is for everyone. You know, the second thing I want you to think about, and I'm going to start to land the plane here just a little bit as it revolves encountering Jesus is this truth. Encountering Jesus requires curiosity. Encountering Jesus requires curiosity. In your Bible, look at Luke chapter 2, look at verse 13. Luke chapter 2, verse 13. This is what we read. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. Can I ask 
ask you a question? What led you to tune in to today's broadcast? How is it that you're listening to this conversation and engaging with me right now? Would you dare to believe my suggestion that God nudged you to tune in? And to your credit, like the shepherds in our story, you've responded to God's nudge, which is a good thing. What you're illustrating, even in your own activity today, is curiosity. Encountering Jesus requires curiosity. Pursuing Jesus is a choice. Friend, God, our Creator, our, our Heavenly Father, is not going to force Himself on us. He'll pursue us. He'll create all these beautiful things around us to try to clamor for our attention and say, hey, look at me. Look at what I've created for you. There's a whole lot more outside your grid than you realize. Hey, look at me. I want to have a relationship with you. God wants you and me to know his son. God invites you and me to know his son. But God's not going to force himself on us. Rather, he lets you and he lets me make the decision. And we see this truth here in this Christmas Bible story. You know, I find it so interesting in this Christmas story that the angels never told the shepherd to go look for Jesus. Did you catch that? The angels never told the shepherds what to do. They simply announced Jesus' birth. They said, well, you can find him by, uh, he'll be a baby. You can identify him by what he's wearing. He'll be wearing strips of cloth. You can find him. He's going to be in a barn. He's going to be resting in a manger. But they never said to the shepherds, go. They never said, go to Bethlehem and seek out Jesus. No, it was a shepherd's curiosity that led them to the manger. What we see here at the, is that these shepherds were hungry. Friend, are you hungry? Are you hungry to have God touch your life? Are you hungry to have God welcome you into a relationship with Him? This Christmas story is good news. For now, I want to encourage you that wherever you might be on your faith journey, whether you're new to this whole faith thing or you've been at this for many, many years, as some of you have, stay curious, stay hungry, don't get complacent because encountering Jesus, as we see here in this Christmas story, requires curiosity. You know, for those of you who are out of state watching today or listening today, I invite you, one of the first steps you can take if you're interested in, in exploring a relationship with Jesus is to keep tuning in like this every week. For those of you who live local here in Costa Mesa or Orange County, if, you, if you're not a part of a church family, I invite you to come and join us at 740 West Wilson Street in Costa Mesa. As together, as a, as a, as a group of people, we, we, we kind of push each other and prod each other to stay curious as we strive to grow in our relationship with Jesus. Encountering Jesus requires curiosity. But here's my favorite part of the Christmas story, and I'm going to end with this. It's really point number three, and that is encountering Jesus will change your life. Encountering Jesus will change your life. I know this to be true because Jesus has changed my life. I want you to look one more at a few more verses, one more time at a few more verses here in the Gospel of Luke in your Bibles. Look at verse 16, Luke chapter 2, verse 16. Let's close out this Christmas story. This is what we read. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary 
kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Encountering Jesus will change your life. Have you encountered Jesus? You know, a relationship with Jesus, it's amazing. You know, have you ever, it's just this morning I woke up with kind of this nasty dream and I found myself fearful. And in that moment, I turned to Jesus and he turned that fear to peace. Jesus has a way, a relationship with Jesus. He, when we're feeling weak, he helps us be strong. When you need hope and you're feeling despair, Jesus is to the rescue. Jesus will love on you when you feel discarded. He will accept you when everyone else pushes you away. Jesus will guide you when you need direction. He will protect you when you're feeling unsafe. But best of all, you know what a relationship with Jesus will do? He will forgive you when you feel dirty. I know because I'm a recipient of God's grace and forgiveness. Friends, God loves you and he loves me and he wants us to meet his son. You know, one of the things I've learned in my own relationship with Jesus is that it's a process. You know, belief is a process. Spirituality is a journey. You know, when you think about, think about a hobby that you enjoy. You know, for example, one of the things that I love to do, which you may or may not be aware of, is I love to ride motorcycles. For most of my life, I've ridden motorcycles, and in the last five or six years, I've ridden tens of thousands of miles on my motorcycle. And would you believe that even though I've been riding a motorcycle for almost 55 years now, I'm still not an expert. Sure, I, I know a lot of stuff, but you know what? There's a lot of stuff I still don't know. I haven't mastered the art of mechanics, and I haven't mastered the art of you know doing wheelies or anything like that. Motorcycle riding, like Christianity or spirituality or a relationship with Jesus, it takes time. It's a process. And God the Father, here's the best part about the story. God the Father welcomes me and he welcomes you wherever we are at on that process, on that spiritual journey to join him. Friends, God wants you to meet his son. Because once you encounter Jesus, he will change your life. You know, to encounter Jesus always begins with the first step. And so here's a first step that I invite you to take. We're going to take really three steps as we close this conversation today. And the first step is I want you to just pray a prayer with me right now. Oftentimes, if, you're, if you've been around Palm Harvest, you'll see me encourage people to kind of open the palms of your hands like this open, like you're going to receive a gift from somebody. And as I, oftentimes when I approach God in prayer, I'll take a deep breath. And so right now, I just encourage you to take a deep breath, inhale. And when I inhale, I just often kind of throw up this arrow prayer. I say, God, I want more of you. And as I exhale, I say, God, I want less of me. So take a deep breath one more time. Inhale. God, I want more of you. Exhale. God, I want less of me. Now pray this prayer in your heart. Say, Jesus, I want to get to know you better. Jesus, I, I want to get to know you, you better. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm not perfect, 
but if you will welcome me like you did the shepherds in this Christmas story, as much as I know how, I invite you to be a part of my life. Jesus, I want to get to know you better. Please change me into the person you want me to be. This is my Christmas prayer. Amen. So that's the first step. Did you take it? I hope you did. Here's step number two. If you just prayed this prayer with me, inviting Jesus to, to, to come and be a part of your life, now I want you to tell somebody. You know, when we read this Christmas story after meeting Jesus, the Bible tells us that these shepherds, they start telling everybody about their experience and it blew people's minds. Who can you tell right now? In fact, I just want you to grab, all your, grab your phone from your pocket if you have it or your digital device and I want you to reach out to a mom or a dad or a, your boss or a friend and just say, hey, I just want to let you know, I know it's Christmas, sorry to bother you, but I just want to let you know that I just invited Jesus to be a part of my life. I thought you'd want to know. Will you do that? And maybe, maybe like the people who heard the shepherd's stories, they're going to go, what? Pfft. Tell me more. Who can you tell? Say, here's another option. If you, if you can send me an email, go to mike at palmharvest.com and just say, hey Mike, today I met Jesus. I would love to hear from you. Or you can use your Palm Harvest app if you've downloaded that. Mike, I met Jesus. Because encountering Jesus will, will change your life. So let's say one final prayer. I've talked long enough today, it's Christmas, but let's say this one final prayer. So again, hands open, heart open, mind open. With me, take a deep breath, inhale, say, God, I want more of you in my life. Exhale, forgive me, I want less of me. Like the shepherds, pray this in your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sharing with me Jesus, thank you for sharing your son Jesus with me. I want to grow more in my relationship with him. So please lead me and guide me and grow me. This is my Christmas prayer in Jesus' name. And everybody said, A. Amen. Amen. Well, Merry Christmas once again. I'm super glad that you tuned in. For those of you who have a winter white, you know, Christmas, get out there and enjoy the snow today. For those of you here locally in Southern California, I encourage you, if you can, to go down to the Pacific Ocean and dip your toes in the water because truly life is to be lived and experienced. So enjoy today. I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Happy New Year, everybody. We'll see you in 2023.